Welcome back to Unchartered. This week we'll be exploring what some may call the fishing capital of the world. Throughout our journey we will be experiencing the local culture, food, and of course the fishing that this sunshine state has to offer. Stay tuned as Lawson, Lojo, and I compete for a thousand dollar donation on behalf of Lo, Mercury, and Ketchka. We're on, baby! This is Uncharted Florida. Welcome back to day two of Uncharted, brought to you by Keshko, Mercury, and Lowe, who have been sending us around South Florida to uh, experience all there is. Today we are on probably the most legendary lake in Florida, if not one of the most legendary lakes in the whole entire U.S., Lake O, Lake Okeechobee. Now, I have only fished here like five or six times. Lojo, you fish here a few wow, times. Wow, so I've fished here more than either one of you. That's, that's the most shocking thing about this is that Mr. Lake Fort guy here, has man. never been to Lake Okeechobee. <laughs> this so, is exciting, yeah, man. This multiple is exciting super things exciting. So I've never been to the big Lake O. I have fished uh, the Kissimmee Chain, which is north of here, and it's sort of similar in vegetation and things like that, but just not in size. This is a gigantic body of water. It just looks like a bowl if you look at the map. So, new lake, semi-experience, very unexperienced, but we're gonna get out there, try to see if we can get in some big, giant, large mouth that it's known for. And while we're at it, we got a challenge card that I'll have to bust up while we are on the lake, and it'll be a uh, fight to the winner for our charities, and there will be a punishment for the loser of today that will dive into towards the end of the day. But right now, we need to get that boat in the water, get through the locks, and go catch some hog donkeys. Check this out, y'all. If you've never been through a lock system, you're about to with us. But what it does is it is a uh, container that holds you, holds your boat in there, and it will lift you up or lower you to uh, the next lake or river or whatever you're going into and get you to that level. So this place is so massive. There's so many offshoots from it that there's locks out here. So all these boats are going to pull in here right now. We're sitting below the actual lake, and it's going to lift us up. They're going to push water in here like a bathtub, plug it up, and then we can get access to the, the next water. So it's a pretty neat experience if you've never done it before. Dudes, you ready to hear the challenges for this morning? Yeah. Okay, each fish is worth 50 points. That's kind of nice. Yeah, that's nice. Anything over four pounds, 50 points. Over five pounds, one hundo. And most fish of the day is another 100 points. So, four simple rules for the day, but it's looking like you need to smash some numbers and then go ahead and get you one over five and you got it locked. And again, we are competing for charity out here. I'm competing for feeding South Florida. I'm competing for our captains for clean water. And I'm competing for Southwest Emergency Fund, which provides resources for people that are hit hard by COVID in South Florida. So we got a lot of wind right now and we're on a huge body of water. So the best thing we can do to fish effectively is throw moving baits. And one of the, my favorite baits anyway, and during windy conditions is a spinner bait. Uh, I've got a half ounce zinger on here with a, a little Biospawn uh, Exo Swim on the back, just as a trailer. And these fish are, are starting to group up a little bit. And believe it or not, some of these fish are pre-spawn. I mean, they'll actually spawn here in December. Um, but they'll start to group up in, in little bitty wolf packs and uh, usually in the fall start feeding on shad. There's shiners in here and there's a little bit of shad um, and from what we've heard and uh, typically just general fall patterns, once you get one bite 
you'll see another couple bites come out of that same area. So uh, hit it hard with a moving bait, like a lipless crankbait, a spinner bait, a swim bait, something like that. And then um, if the wind is calm enough, go back in there and, and get you a, a couple of plastic flips. So if we get one bite, I'm sure we're all gonna be thrown in the exact same area. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up that swim jig here. Had a bit, bit my tail, bit my tail off. Definitely thumped her hard though. How grassy is it on the edge? It's a hard edge. It's grassy and it dropped off. Ladies and gentlemen, first bite. Bit my tail, that's not a good sign. It was a good thump and came back with nothing but a front portion. I need them lips on it. Transition time. So, there's a very famous angler out here by the name of Martin Scott, being the first name. Even more famous, Roland is dead. They, uh, they know this lake like the back of their, their hands, and uh, they just got a little intel from him. He happens to be fishing out here today, old Scott. What's up? Yeah, dude, it's just kind of, you know, the water's up. You know, we have this rainwater coming in, and Kind of got the fish a little spread out, but I caught one uh, nice one on the uh, spinner bait. Mm -hmm. Half ounce. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. That's, 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 that's what we're throwing. You got bed on the outside and more clean open. Right down that, that uh, yeah. right before that trail on that outside yep. edge right oh, there. We definitely Just, blasted quite a few casts across that edge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let, let me tell you one little tip that a lot of people don't realize is spinnerbait fishing on a Kajibi. Like when you spinnerbait fish in Texas or anywhere, like you just throw to the edge, right? So you see how that short grass, that's Kissimmee grass. This spinnerbait, I throw it on brain a lot here. Yeah. If you got it on fluorocarbon, it's fine. Yeah. But don't just throw right to the edge. Throw all the way up inside, all those holes and all that, and just power reel it right through there. Like, you know, as it starts to get hung up, just keep reeling it. It'll just come through. And dude, you'll catch so many of them right up inside that stuff. Gotcha. You know, it's not just throw to the edge, but just throw all the way. I call it full drop spinnerbait. There's a lot of people think that you don't throw. I mean, I'll yeah. throw it in the thickest stuff you see here, other than the big tall cattails. You're just burning through all the pepper grass and stuff like that. Yeah, just and I'm good. burning it, but just fishing it normal. But okay. I'm telling you, I'll wing it all through. Like, I'll throw it all, all back through there. A lot of real estate. Yeah. Throwing some dang zingers. Working through a bunch of pepper grass and what they'll call bulrush needle grass and slowly roll it through there and trying to catch that vibration. Here's a fish. Got him? Yeah. Winch out, buddy. Winch out. Might be decent fish, unless I got a bunch of grass with it. Oh, awesome. What you got? That's a nice, nice little fish, fish buddy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look at this guy in the back of the boat. Just Zingy. God bless Scott Martin, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things you could spend a week out on Okeechobee trying to break it down because it is, it's more akin to fishing offshore in saltwater where it's all about having those numbers and having those spots because it's just such an enormous lake that almost looks the same everywhere you know having the uh, blessing of Scott giving us a little insight definitely changed the game for us here because we're on a short time window but there's a beautiful largey probably a two pounder because he's nice and chunky on the zinger all right, thank you Heifer, you've made our day and hopefully they only get bigger here. That's a, that's a small fish on Okeechobee, but a very beautiful bass nonetheless. We're gonna release them because I wanna keep slinging and hopefully these boys can hook into a big one. Thank you. Uh, you know, I just made a little switch here. Going with that. Swim jig here, grass hero. 
and uh, putting that just bright white color boot tail on the back. And this stuff's getting pretty thick. I love throwing spinnerbaits and stuff like this, but we got two other spinnerbaits flying around. Figured I'd pioneer a little bit, get a little swim jig uh, action. Swim jig comes through this stuff like butter. Oh, I just got him! Oh. Yeah, baby! Oh my Jeez. goodness! Did you see that? <laughs> First one on the swim jig. First Okeechobee fish for Mr. Lake Court guy. Right. I, don't lie, I was looking off in a gaze, <laughs> and uh, this guy ate it, and I looked down, and it was swimming off. So nice. let's, let's, let's get the official sniff on the Okeechobee. Ah, it smells very grassy. I love it. I'll let my first Okeechobee bass go here. It's 50 points, though, for you. 50 points. Take it. And I'm uh, just throwing that little grass hero with the uh, exoswim on the back of it rolling it through here and very similar to the spinnerbait I just ate it actually it was like it was in my my view I just went I don't know was, I was having dreams of big bass yeah, baby. our tails off and we've been seeing some blow-ups but it's just really not connecting for us and unfortunately on a trip like this as fun as it is getting to run around and do everything time can kind of be the enemy and we have lunch plans and have to be somewhere by three that's close to two hours away so we uh, got to get scooting here and run back to the marina and grab some grub and then we're hitting the road and doing more things in the salt water now so we might have to pack her down and make the run. Keep going. Boom. There you go. Alrighty, friends. We are at the legendary Roland Martin Marina, and we are having some grub. I think we're uh, gonna get some burgers, maybe some appetizers, get rehydrated, and just enjoy a good meal, enjoy good company. So. I, I think, I'm not sure about this, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but this might be the biggest tiki bar in the Okeechobee area. So, uh, I mean, yeah. 100% agree. So, with, with a tiki bar, you already know there's going to be a wide variety of adult beverages, if that's your thing. And when you've been out on the water all morning like we have, I don't know what else is going to set off a meal that's loaded with fresh seafood, gator tail, better than a nice tiki bar drink, right? Absolutely. Well, my time. Maybe you come over here, give it a quick dangle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your water's right here. You get your, uh, you know, whatever you want. You can just literally eat your burger, get your beverage, and uh, fish right here. Roll Martin Marina. I love this place, man. Roll Martin, great American fisherman, great American ideas, and just an all-star of our uh, of our industry. It's a pretty cool, man. Chicken vibe. Tastes like a big lizard. <laughs> How's the local lizard? Good. Good. Oh, yeah, excellent. I don't know how. Pretty big. Pretty big than the last I caught today. Unhinge my jaw like an anaconda and just go for it, or what? It's good. I mean, I got a cheeseburger. I think Rackley was the only person who got anything seafood wise. Golden Krispies, man. Golden Krispies. So. Catfish. In all fairness, we did eat here last night as well. Didn't show you guys that, but I think I got some mahi mahi. I don't know if anybody else got any seafood, but you did. So the seafood is great, cheeseburgers are great, nachos are great. I mean, gator tail, amazing. I mean, what else would you expect out here? Enjoying some good old Southern Golden Krispies right now. The pork chop of the South. The great American channel catfish. And uh, you know, I fry a lot of fish. They fry these up really good. We 
we have made it back to the salt water. And we're gonna take our little bass boat here and um, get it a little salty. So we're gonna do some uh, inshore fishing, basically. This is like my home water, I grew up fishing, so I'm excited to share it with these guys. But I'm also like a little nervous because I want to show out. And this fishery that we're in right now holds really, really big fish but it can be really tough sometimes. So uh, I'm just like, fingers crossed that we're gonna get on them. I know where to go, I know what to do. It's just whether or not they want to chomp. And we could be looking at catching 35 pound jack, 30 pound snook. I, I'm just excited to have these guys be uh, immersed into it because I know neither of them have done much of it. And so I'm just, you know, the competition part of me kind of fades away a little bit because I'm just excited to share this moment with these dudes. This is, this is awesome. So we just opened our challenge card and this is what we got here, boys. Each fish, 50 points, just like the morning was. Biggest fish on a salt native lure is 150 points. That is monstrous. That is huge. That's our biggest points we've had so far. Each saltwater species is 100 points, and uh, that is it. So basically, we have a variety of different things we can catch. Any saltwater species, so anything besides a bass. Well, I'm excited just because, I mean, for the obvious reasons, like he already said, bass boat, bass tackle, saltwater fish. Saltwater fish definitely gonna be probably bigger, harder fighting than anything we've caught freshwater wise so far this trip. But me personally, I've never caught tarpon, never caught snook, never caught redfish, never caught a lot of these saltwater fish. I'm just a basic, you know, southern fre freshwater angler. Never did any of that saltwater stuff, so. Any, any species I catch today is not only going to be, what, 150 points, but it's also going to be a new species for me, so I'm kind of winning twice. Oh, yeah, I'm in last place. You are yeah. also losing right now for today's. I mean, I mean, yesterday fell off the wagon as well, but today, if, if you lose, I, there's going to be a bad consequence. It has to do with bad taste, possibly, in your mouth. Let it get some of that salt water in her veins. I was tied on a Guggen Squad Catch Coast Scout right there. Just a good little jerk bait to float around the docks and is a really good small bait fish presentation to entice a snook to come out and slobber on it. I like to start it out with something like this. You can cover more water and uh, fish don't have a hard time eating it. You just get bit, Justin? There's one. That might be a jack. Got something. Come on, buddy. What do we got? Oh, you got a pompadour. <laughs> is, it, what is that? Jack. Well, that's the first one I ever caught, though. Really? Yeah, dude. I've never yeah. caught any of this stuff, man. Heck yeah. Do I just boat flip him? Do I punch him? What do I do? Hut! Wow, bam! A hundred thousand points, baby. Let's go. I forgot the rules, but I know it's worth something. That's worth mega points, actually. Dude, that's that's my first. Okay, so this is a Jack Craval. So uh, apparently, this is a, a standard fish for this area. Oh, just... oh, oh, oh no! Yes! Look at him stealing my thunder. Just stole Dude. it. Dude! Oh! oh! That's an eater. Just came right off. Stole my thunder. <laughs> Dang it, man. These things have teeth, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Everything has teeth out here. I also got followed in while you were releasing your snook there. Really? Backside boat release. There it is. Whoa. That's Jack. Jeez, we're like quadruple hooked up here. There's a point frenzy going on. Basically how Jack worked, they're rolling schools and just maraud around where yeah. snook like to, uh... oh my gosh, this thing will not come out. Dang you, Rackley, and your snook catching ways. Where Damn snook you. like to uh, sit up on structure. <laughs> But it's always fun. Jack Kerbal are the, uh, the day savers because if you find one, you can typically find a bunch and they are very aggressive fish. As they get bigger, they continually get harder and harder to catch because they just get big and smart. But these little ones are hungry fellers and will eat anything that moves fast in the ocean. It's uh, basically fair game for them. This is your Jack Kerbal, probably the second biggest jack species in the US other than an amberjack. They get massive. 
you know, a giant, giant one of these is over 20 pounds and they can get up to 40 or so, but uh, they grow super fast. They eat everything. Probably the most aggressive predator you'll find in salt and very, very fun to catch. Hot action, ladies and gentlemen. So we have two jacks right there. I had a snook. Um, kind of got off on the back deck. Landed points, but um, there's so much action going on. I was trying to get back in there in the school. Next one we catch. Hopefully we'll catch another one. We'll show you the bottom. We'll show you kind of how much bass-like they are. You can have a very distinctive lateral line and you notice like I'm throwing a shrimp and it's a slower moving bait and that's what that snook ate over uh, the faster moving bait. So sometimes they can, they can be like that, like a bass, like they'll, they'll hit a slower moving presentation hanging on a dock just like that one was. And that's what's so cool, you know, on bass gear, throwing that salt native shrimp and got popped by a snook. So they get a lot bigger than that, but any of them are fun to catch. Hit it just like a bass. Probably a jack. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Right little little snook. All right. Gosh darn it. Still that snook, Lawson. I'm on. Another one. No! <laughs> <laughs> snook aren't quite as easily boat flipped as largemouth are. Gosh, darn it. This right here is oh. the common snook. Probably my favorite fish on planet Earth. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Feed very similar to a bass, act super similar to a bass. They love structure. They got a sandpaper mouth like a large mouth and they eat their bait whole just like they do. Really, really beautiful fish. And this is a very young one, very little. And uh, they can get over 40 pounds. And in Costa Rica, they get massive, massive giant ones. And what we're fishing today has some huge ones as well. Yeah, if you can get some, like these really giant boat lifts right here, mm -hmm. I have. Caught some big, oh, there's another one. Caught some big fish out of them. Like another snooklet. Come, come right at me. Another beautiful little hand bone right there. I mean, they're, they're still going off every direction. So it's hard to see because the water's pretty choppy, but right in front of us, there's this giant school of mullet, which are the main forage bait fish in the river that we're fishing and we're really waiting for these mullet to just start getting crashed on by tarpon, jack, and snook, and it might be on. So we're just gonna hang around, work some baits, and see if we can find some uh, big old submarine jacks cruising around. Oh, that's getting crushed by a big, that's a shark, bro, that's a shark. I'm about to deem Domus in the head. Come on, right here, right here, ready? Ready? Oh, that's a, we're on, baby! That's either a huge jack or a shark. That might have been a bull shark. That's why I have this top water sitting in my hand. We're watching the mullet, just waiting for something to fire up on them. And uh, the super heavy beast walker is able to just bomb it a mile. And through right where that fish is trying to eat, that's just a tank jacker ball. <laughs> Baby. He's probably like. Yo, that would spool my bass rod. 15 pounder. How big he is. I need he one looks of those big. For, uh, I don't know, oh, that's a monster, <laughs> dude. He's like, he's like probably 15 to 18 pounds. Oh my god. This thing is huge. This is my least favorite thing they can do, though, with his dog next to the boat. The most fun is when they eat it and run 100 yards away. Instead, he's like, I'm just going to spin in circles around your boat. Jeez. Yeah, it's comical when I pull this fish out of the water, you won't think they're the same species that me and Lojo caught a few of, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Just, a, just built for speed and power. They're just, they, they call them the inshore tuna. The canal tuna. I cannot believe those fish getting blown up on by that giant shark. Yeah. That was insane. No, I think that was bad. Really? Yeah, they'll, the bull sharks will be mixed in with the jack like that. Woo Look at that, Where's the gaff at? Now that's a fish. Gaff that sucker. You're, you're looking at my gaff right here, brother. What a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Canal <laughs> tuner. <laughs> Woo! That's what we're after, Dude, buddy. That blow up. Holy. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, you. I. You got me nervous. I promise you, you will not find a fish that fights much harder than these guys right here. Mr. Jack Crevalli. Oh. Oh, the monster. <laughs> On the beast waka. He is a tank. That is our boy. We've been looking for a big giant Jack Creval, and believe it or not, they can get about double to three times the size. He's probably 18 pounds, I'd guess. Maybe like 15. <laughs> epic, epic fish. Jack Creval are such a fast moving fish if you watch how that went down. They don't stop and breathe water, like they don't just sit there. So the way to release them, head first, tuna spear, like that, and it pumps the water through their gills. It's like smack them on the butt, get some adrenaline going, and they're off. <laughs> yeah. Kind of winding down here today. Been a long day. Started in the swamps, you know, Okeechobee. Had an experience in that. And um, we've come all the way to, I don't even know, I guess this is a, a bay leading into the ocean. Um, this intro waters. And um, we've been fishing hard. I definitely think this has been the more exciting part of the day for me because. You just don't know what's going to come up and eat your bait, you know? And right now, you got to have a bull shark come up and eat your lure. You don't even know. So it's exciting, but I'm, I'm starting to get a little tired and definitely wanting to enjoy some good Florida fat, fresh fish and just take in the Florida vibes, man. These sunsets, these orange clouds that come out. And uh, before we end all of this, though, we have one last thing, the consequence for the biggest loser of today. Why are you gonna say biggest loser, man? That's so harsh. The smallest loser of today. <laughs> and uh, not gonna be fun. Here at the ramp, and it is time for the consequence. Now, in the points today, Lawson ended up blowing it out. Uh, I got second place, Lojo. <sighs> bottom, bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Here's what we got going on for the consequence. We're in Florida, the, the biggest producer of oranges on the planet, I believe. You can check <laughs> me on that, me but on I'm, that. I'm pretty it sure. It might be California, but. It know. could be, but Tropicana. Uh, brewed right here in Florida, you know, that's always a weird thing when you brush your teeth and then you go to a breakfast situation and you're like, orange juice? Ew! Why does it taste so bad? I don't know. There's science behind it. Acids mixed with the fluorides. So we got a nice little toothpaste kit for you. Uh, some Colgate. Go ahead and give it a good squirt. I'm really, I'm really glad brush. that you got the, uh, well see, I was just going to eat the toothpaste and then drink the orange juice. I would like totally eat it? I mean. Let's let's get it a full swish. Okay. Like so we good, were actually brushing here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The interesting part is we did. We, it wasn't just salt water that Lawson dominated in. We did both fresh water and salt water, and he dominated really in both. Uh, the domination yeah. of catching one single bass that happened to be like eight ounces bigger hey, than the bass the, that the you domina caught. Hey, your that, domination. If it was a tournament, you would have won. That's describing you domination. Yeah. I don't think I'm into it. Your domination started the moment we all got here. And it apparently is I mean, going on the whole way. Home field advantage kind of is what it is. You know, the sucky yeah. part is we're going to go eat a delicious meal after this. And, and this is just going to taste. Yeah, yeah, this is just yeah. going to wreck it, I'm sure. All right. Brushing my teeth on camera is not something that I ever thought that I would be doing. Uh, what is your technique? You start on bottom Are first? Are you like a wide mouth open kind of guy? With a uh, tongue out? Is that uh, your I, think, I guess is so. That your boat? I don't know. I'm nervous now. No, I think you should leave it in a little bit and then swish. Get a full taste. Maybe, maybe, maybe swish with the juice <laughs> and then take a drink of the juice. Yeah, there it is. Oh, oh man. Oh. Oh. You just swallowed all that. You just swallowed the <laughs> <laughs> It's not that bad. It's all right. We're not I mean, all, it's not good, but. We're not all a big hulking man piece. Wow. 
I wasn't expecting the no spit. Just goes in for another drink. All right. Small the pace. I'm trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. That's going to do it for today, folks. A uh, little taste of Florida right there. We are on to the next adventure. I believe we're going to be doing a little bit more salt action, maybe getting into some species that I haven't even caught yet. So it's awesome. It's crazy down here. Thank you so much to Mercury, Low, and Catchco for putting this up and sending us out here to have a ton of fun and catch some fish and hopefully entertain you guys. We'll see you in the next episode.